Hi, I'm Michaela, and welcome to this introduction to KDB AI, a powerful knowledge base vector database. In this video, I'll start by introducing what a vector database is, discuss why and how you might use it, and finish by showing how you can sign up and get started with our cloud version of KDB AI, which is free to use. So vector databases are specialized databases optimized for storing and querying vector data. And they're needed in use cases where we need similarity search on high dimensional data. And in this diagram, it's representing the process of adding data to your vector database and how that might look. So the vector database is over here to the right. And we can see that the pre-processing steps that happen ahead of that are on the left. So starting with our source data, and that might be something like image files, audio files, um, text documents, and so on. And these are passed through an embedding model that converts them to numerical lists that look like this. And this means a computer can better understand them. These are called vector embeddings. And these are what are stored inside our vector database. And note that these embeddings are stored on a row by row basis. And for those of you familiar with our KDB Plus product, you might know that we've always been able to store data like this, but much of the focus has been on per column analytics rather than per row. And what KDB AI does is streamline per row analytics for users, as well as bringing a lot of natural language and generative AI features like support for LLMs. And once the data is stored like this, a user can then query the database. And we see here, this also goes through the same embedding model, and then the most similar vectors are returned from your database. This is really useful for tasks like content recommendation, image similarity, um, identifying similar documents, as well as anomaly and fraud detection, where you want to find similar results rather than querying for exact results. Now let's get started and put some of this into practice using KDB AI. And to do this, we're gonna walk through the Quick Start Notebook, and this is available over on the KX GitHub, and the link will be below. Now there are some prerequisites you need like Python and Pandas, and you can follow the steps in the README to install these. And once they're done, we just want to import the various packages we need into our notebook. And the most significant of these being our KDB AI client, which allows us to talk back to our KDB AI database, which is what we'll do in the next step. So to get started yourself with KDB AI, you need to sign up for a free account. And you can do this by going to our website on kdb.ai, clicking the sign up button on the top right hand corner, and that will bring you to a form that looks like this, where you'll be prompted to enter your details. Once you've verified your email, you will receive a welcome email with a link to your own starter edition where you can sign in for yourself. And once signed in, you'll be presented with the KDB AI console. And the main thing of note here is the API endpoint and also where you can add your API key. So you should add your own API key. And these two things are how we will talk to KDB AI externally, say for example, in our Jupyter notebook that we just showed. So if you're following along with this video and have signed up with me, keep a note of your endpoint and API key as we'll need them in the next step. So hopping back to Jupyter, we are gonna set these two variables. I've just done that off camera to keep mine private. And then you can run the session command here, which is what allows you to connect to your KDB AI database. We're able to check our documentation for functions like the session one here using question mark. And we can also check to see if we have any data in our database by running session.list. Now you will have no table set up here if you're just joining for the first time. I'm going to run this cell above, which is just checking for the table that I'm going to define called data. And if it exists, it's going to delete it. Um, and if we run session.list again, you'll see I've now deleted that table. So we're good to go. So now we're going to create our table. And to do this, we first need to define a table schema, which contains one column of vector embeddings. And in this example, we're going to actually have two columns. One is an ID, and the second is our vector embeddings, which is where we define our dimensionality, our similarity metric, and our index type. And we do that using the vector index attribute. So let's jump down to where we're setting our schema. 
and we can see those parameters I just mentioned here. And the dimensionality we choose here is eight. And later on, we'll see when we're creating embeddings, we choose an eight dimensional embedding and that needs to match this. So if you're using different data to this, you need to make sure that they match. And um, we've chosen our similarity metric here as L2, otherwise known as Euclidean distance. And the index is the flat one here. Now there are other metrics available like inner product and cosine and indexes like IVF PQ and HNSW. So whichever one of these you choose really depends on the specific context and nature of your data, as well as your performance requirements. So if you want to find out more about this, you can check out our learning hub over on our KDB AI website. That's got a lot of articles around these points and goes into detail on why you might choose one over the other. Now, once you've got our schema defined, we can then run create table. And now we're ready to add some data to the table. So that's finished running. So we're going to just create some dummy data here to represent what the embeddings would look like. And we're using a pandas data frame with the schema that we just defined in the previous step, um, matching the data frame we're going to create. So we're going to do five rows. And again, just noting we're doing eight dimensional floats here. And the eight dimensional is important um, because we've set our dimensionality in our index to be eight. We're going to add some dummy ID values, turn them into a pandas data frame. Take a quick look at that. So you can see we've got our two columns as we defined before. That's it. Once our data has been inserted, we're able to use the query function to return and see what our data table looks like. We can also add different arguments to make it easier to do things like filtering and aggregating. So here we're adding a filter, just looking for the ID of L. Okay. Um, this point is useful um, more for data discovery. Um, and we'll see in the next section, we can actually use these same parameters we've set up here in our search. Finally, let's run similarity search on our table using the search function here. And we pass the query vector to search as the first argument, and then the number of nearest neighbors we want returned as the second. So in this example, for now, we're just looking for one back. So we get one result back when we search. And this is saying um, this here result is the most similar to my input query. And you'll see here actually the nearest neighbor distance um, as well calculated. And this number is coming from Euclidean distance and that's the similarity metric we've used. Now I can ask for more. So instead of looking for one, I can ask for three back. You can see we get different values of nearest neighbor distance here with varying levels of similarity. And as I mentioned there, we can also apply the previous filter we've set up to the search. Um, and this is actually really powerful, especially with really large data sets because the searching happens after the filtering, which means it's going to have a big impact on performance and efficiency when you're only going to be running similarity search after the filter has happened. And worth noting as well, you can pass multiple query vectors at a time into your search. So that's it for our introduction to vector databases and KDB AI. To get hands-on with more examples and to create your own embeddings, do check out our range of samples, which is available over on our GitHub and the links here will bring you there. These cover examples such as document search, image search, recommendation systems, pattern matching, things like retrieval augmentation with Langchain and sentiment analysis. And we should have videos coming for each of these examples soon. So do subscribe to the KX YouTube channel to keep up to date. Thank you.